Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks. It's your host, Simon McGinnis of the Journey Faith Podcast. And yes, you guessed it, we are back for another exciting episode. And this week, it gives me great pleasure to welcome a new friend of mine uh, from about a year ago, Pastor Howard Hines. Howard, welcome to the show. Thank you, Simon. Good to be here with you. Yeah, well, it, it, it's uh, good to have you back. Uh, I know a couple of weeks ago, a couple episodes ago, uh, we had you and Peter sitting down with me and we we discussed uh, the importance of uh, having other fellow Bible believing uh, people around you to support you, encourage you and spur you on in your journey. And now here we are, you and I get to sit down this week and uh, hear your side of the story and see where your journey began and where you've come from and uh, exactly what you do. So for the right. folks that don't know you, you are the the lead pastor at St. Stephen the Martyr Anglican Church. And right. that's yeah. part of the ANIC or the Anglican Network in uh, Canada. Right. And uh, I, I found this on the website that your mission statement for your church is that you're followers of Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and you set out to proclaim the gospel. Mm -hmm. And that you have five values. Uh, you value the authority of scripture. You value prayer. Mm -hmm. You value abundant life. You value children and youth. And last but not least, mm -hmm. you um, value the concept of, van of evangelism. So right. what 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 a great uh, way to set up your church. And, mm -hmm. and I know through the different interactions that we've had, uh, between Solid Rock Wesleyan and your guys' church, that it, it, it's quite unique to see how our uh, congregations are intermingling and uh, how mm -hmm. the different activities, both from both churches, are, yes. are, are uh, I guess, gravitating different members to different events, such as the Midday Monday that uh, Pastor Peter holds, mm -hmm. and then your Bible study on Wednesday night, and then the prayer nights, and then the men's mm -hmm. breakfast that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, the, this kind of fellowship that we've been having over the last little while mm -hmm. has been so unique and so refreshing. So mm -hmm. I want to welcome you to the show, and thank you for taking some time to sit down with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pleasure, Simon. I'm glad you invited me, and... Uh... So here we are. <laughs> yeah, here we are. So uh, in instead of uh, belaboring the point, let's just jump right into it. Sure. <laughs> um, what would what would be your earliest memory or recollection of your faith journey? Did, did you grow up in, in a Christian home or do you find your faith later on in life or what like a gr grandparent or a, a parent that kind of directed you or, or how, how did that come to play? Yeah, well, I grew up in uh, Fogo on the northeast coast of uh, of the island of Newfoundland, and uh, uh, we we grew up in a in an Anglican home, and uh, church going was very was very important. You know, um, there were eight children, and so we were encouraged to worship every Sunday. My parents didn't always come with me with us because. Mother stayed home to cook, but some of my earliest memories are going to church with my father at a very young age, and then um, I had a grandmother who was with, who was a, a United Church woman. Of course, the churches had come together to form the United Church in Canada, and she, she was a United Church woman, and she always housed the clergy. Whenever the okay. clergy came to her community, they always came to her house after. Uh, worship to have a meal she right there was only somebody in the communities that were appointed for this work so so she i remember her uh, at a very young age my grandmother reading bible stories to me you know okay so at a very young age and all these things uh um uh, sort of had an impact on me and uh but it wasn't until i was about 13 years old that i i uh, gave my life to christ in a very real way there were some uh, gospel hall people who had come into Fogo Harbor on a, on a ship. They were doing missionary work around the coast and they came into uh, Fogo Harbor uh, on a boat and they set up their uh, loudspeakers on the government wharf and uh, began to preach, to preach the gospel. And um, 
I remember being uh, hearing them as I was walking through the community, hearing the preaching of these men who had come to the place, and uh, they weren't well received, you know, by all right. of the people. But I was really drawn in some way to the preaching. And uh, one of the things that I remember vividly was the, the the preaching on the passage from John, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And uh, that passage really grabbed my heart. Okay. And so somehow at that period in my life, I gave my life to Christ. And uh, so that was a turning point. You know, I had been involved in the church and I was right. an old boy and all that stuff. But I didn't have a living relationship with okay. Christ till that till that moment. So I was about thirteen, and that was a changing point for me. Yeah, I, I gave my life to Christ, and I felt that He came into my life, and we've been walking together, up and down ever right, since. Yeah. That was a long time ago. <laughs> I'm I'm now older. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, I I guess that early on uh, experience of hearing the gospel. Uh, later on turned you to uh, the priesthood. Yes. W w when did that actually come into play well, that you sought yeah. after the, the priesthood and uh, started going down that route? Yeah, well, it was, it was that's a funny thing because I was, there was never a time in my life when I didn't feel, that's a strange thing. I don't want to, I don't want to make it sound too lofty or, or holy, but I remember at the age of five, feeling that this is what I was called to do. Of course, I didn't have all the words to articulate that, but I felt that that's, I was called to something to do with, with ministry. And, uh, and, and it was often affirmed by the, the people in my life, you know, who would say to me, you're going to be a minister when you grow up. That right. kind. Okay. Yeah. So it was, so I can't remember a time in my life when that wasn't part of what, I felt the call, you know, I didn't, as I say, I couldn't articulate this until right. later. In time. But there was a, there was, there was a call on my life. Uh, looking back at a very early age, even to the age of five. Okay. Yeah. So would you say that that passage from John is like an influential uh, yeah. Bible scripture on your yeah. life? Yep. Yeah. Uh, is there anybody else, like maybe a, a grandmother, like you talk about your grandmother that, brought you to the services and that she hosted the the clergy in in the community yeah. is there is there a significant individual or bible character that stands out to you howard that you just like when when you encountered that person or you encountered that mm -hmm. bible verse or bible character you said yeah i need to know more about this kind mm -hmm. of faith and it kind of encouraged you to learn more about mm -hmm. uh the the faith of mm -hmm being a Christian and being an Anglican or, or wherever. Well, after that, that episode in my life, when I was 13, then I began to really find myself going to the Bible and uh, wanting to immerse myself in, in the gospels and uh, you know, very much pouring into the new Testament. I, and, and that was a part of my early life, right? I read and absorbed, these passages and I, uh, and I, and even then, and later, certainly as I went to university and so on, I had a, a very deep sense that I was being led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has always been a prominent, has always been prominent in my life and trying to, to, to live in the spirit and to allow myself to be led by the Holy Spirit. So I've always had a deep sense of the Holy Spirit in my life. And it's always been a big factor in my ministry. Right. You know, over the years uh, so you know yeah so i guess it was you know and i certainly i, I mean i was really turned on by the epistles of paul and and uh, the whole the whole you know paul was very much a prominent figure in my life as i went through these formative years right yeah so you talk about university was that uh biblical um, university or was that no, like I went, in 1976 okay i went to i went to memorial Okay, and I did a I did a degree and um, I did a bachelor of arts in in philosophy and uh, a minor in religious studies. Okay, and then right after that I was uh, well I went when I was seventeen so I was 21, 20, 
21, I went to uh, the Toronto School of Theology, which is part of the University of Toronto, okay. Trinity College, and I did a I did a master's in divinity from from TST. Okay. And I graduated graduated in 1983. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. so what when when did you officially become an ordained pastor within the Anglican Church? Yeah. After that. Right. So I, I graduated from Trinity College in Toronto. And then I uh right, that was in April, I think it was, of eighty three. And then I okay. went right to Labrador. I oh, went wow. to Labrador with I, I was ordained, sorry, as a deacon okay. in the cathedral here in St. John's. Okay. And then I went immediately to Happy Valley Goose Bay, and I served under a senior pastor, Francis Buckle, for some years. And I spent 10 years ministering in Labrador. So I was ordained a deacon in 1983 in May. Actually, it's going to be 41 years now. Wow. May, May, the, May the, the 8th uh, coming up. And then in, in November of that year, uh, I was ordained to, to what we call the priesthood, the presbyter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so then I spent 10 years there then before wow. I came back, yeah. So how long have you been back here in the St. John's area now? Well, I uh, I came back, I spent 10 years in Labrador. Okay. And by this time, I, I got married to a teacher there that I, I, I knew actually from university days. Her father was a doctor in Church of Falls. And uh, we, we met and got married and we started to have children. So then we came out of Labrador. So I... I came out of Labrador after 10 years. Okay. And my eldest daughter, well, she was three months old. Now she's going to be 31. Wow. So 30, 31 years ago. And I went to New Harbor, which okay. is in Trinity Bay. Yeah. And I spent, I spent five years in Trinity Bay. And then I came, left there and I came into Topso uh, in the parish of, of St. John the Evangelist within the Anglican Church of Canada. And I was there okay. for about nine, nine years. Wow. And then I left the Anglican Church of Canada. And now I've been 15 16 years now with the Anglican Network in Canada, pastoring St. Stephen the Martyr. Wow. Yeah. Uh, been a lot of- what, 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 what a legacy of faith that, uh, that, that just entails and, uh, and, and your steadfastness to your early call in life that um, yeah. like, like you, like you referenced, you said at the earliest age of five years old that you felt some kind of spiritual calling on your life to to lead generations to mm-hmm. the message and, and that when 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 you were 13 you were walking through your town and you heard the message again and it was so clear mm-hmm. and, and and you share the fact that the scripture that they were talking about was ju- the the passage out of John where it talks mm-hmm. about um uh, everyone is saved and when they hear his name and, and that's what you've been doing for all this life, all this time. And, and it goes back to, I, I see how um, St. Stephen of the martyr plays into that and mm-hmm. how you guys have formed uh, your values of the authority of scripture, your prayer, mm-hmm. the abundant life, the children and youth and evangelism and how it, how it envelops who you really truly are. And, and, and over this last year of knowing you that those five values just just come out so alive and, and uh i know the care and concern that you have for your parish and not only just your parish but the people of newfoundland and labrador mm. and uh that that just speaks a a, a sheer testimony of, of god's saving grace on your life and, and the plan that he had for you mm-hmm Yep. I mean, God has been very good to me. I mean, it hasn't been easy, you know. Right. Been, we've had some very real challenges, both professionally and, uh, you know, in, in my private life. I mean, my first wife died when um, after having cancer for five and a half years. And my eldest child was, well, she, she was buried on my eldest daughter's 19th birthday. Oh, wow. So five and a half years prior to that, she was struggling with cancer. So that was a very... Uh, a profoundly challenging time in our lives, you know. Right. And, uh, at the same time, I was uh, <clears throat> separating myself from the Anglican Church of Canada. I'm starting to feel that I, you know, I needed to come out from under um, um, a system that I I felt 
was departing from the true right uh, truth of scripture and i want to go into all that but that was part so that all of that was kind of a challenging time yeah. in my life but in, through it all god has been very faithful you know and um uh, and uh, has has never ever uh, let let me down he's never ever uh, i've never ever felt that he's never been there for us you know right and so so it's it's uh yeah well, our, our time is coming. It's hard to believe our time is coming yes. close to the end. But uh, I wanted to to sum up our time and, and give you one last chance to kind of summarize your journey. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to throw this question out that if no one hears anything up in our episode up until now, what would be one thing that you'd like to leave people with kind of as a life lesson or key takeaway from your journey that mm -hmm. you might like to encourage people with that you could say, Hey, if, if I can learn from this, you too can learn from this. Yeah. So what would that one thing be? Well, I, I, it's a good question, Simon. I mean, to put it in a word, but I, I think that, uh, you know, if anyone, if anyone feels, feels a calling, you know, to serve Christ, then, you know, I, I say, go for it and just uh, take that leap of faith and, um, you know, just trust God with, uh, with your life. You know, he's faithful. And it, the beauty of, of living a longer, I mean, I've, as I say, I've been 41 years in ministry now, so I can look back over right. my life and I have the advantage of being able to say yes when I look back over my, it didn't always feel like it when I was going through it. But as I look back, I can, I can bear testimony that, you know, those whom he calls, he will equip. Right. And he is faithful and the joy and the, the journey is, is not always easy, but it is a joyful, a joyful journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Howard, I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for uh, taking time. Uh, this episode, I know, uh, it, it was good to sit down with you a couple of weeks ago with, with Pastor Peter and mm -hmm. kind of chit chat on that other topic. But it, it's good to hear your story, and I hope people will be encouraged by uh, the legacy of faith that you've lived and um, the steadfastness of forty one years in ministry and uh, how you're you're coming up on a on an anniversary of ministry and all that and. Uh, I wish you continued uh, blessings on your ministry uh, here in Newfoundland, uh, especially in, in partnering with Solid Rock Wesleyan mm -hmm. and uh, the good things that are happening between those two congregations. And uh, once again, thank you for sitting down with me uh, on this episode of The Journey Faith to uh, share your story. Pleasure, Simon. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And I'm so glad you're doing this. Keep doing it. It's great. Oh. Well, thank you so, so much. So, folks, that does it for another exciting episode of The Journey of Faith. Uh, I'm your host, Simon McGinnis, and uh, my guest this week was uh, Pastor Howard Hines of St. Stephen the Martyr Anglican Church here in uh, Newfoundland. Uh, stay tuned for the next exciting episode, folks, and God bless everyone. Have a great time. <laughs>